English, but we're just on machine. In this case, we're gonna send light and we're gonna get sound. Technically speaking, the optical absorption of the laser pulse will produce a rapid thermoelastic tissue expansion that will generate an ultrasound wave that is detectable by an ultrasound transducer. In vivo, we have endogenous chromophores such as melanin, hemoglobin, lipids, etc., that can produce photoacoustic signals. So, the main objective of our study was to assess the fetal cerebellar oxygenation in pregnant rats on day 20 of pregnancy, keeping in mind that the duration of a rat pregnancy is 22 days, and in this case, the analogy with a human pregnancy would be 34 weeks of pregnancy. This was an experimental pilot study in four rat fetuses from two different pregnant rats, in which we first identified the cerebellum by drawing the region of interest around it, and then we assess its oxygen saturation by identifying the red pixels, highly oxygenated, and the blue pixels, less oxygenated, and we are going to focus mainly on the average oxygen saturation, which results from dividing all the oxygenated pixels over the oxygenated and the deoxygenated pixels. The final results for all the four fetuses were 82, 79, 78, and 74 percent, with a medium of 79.5 percent oxygenation. And what is the conclusion of our study is that photoacoustic imaging can be a useful tool in future studies to compare cerebellar oxygenation in fetuses with and without neural tube defects that have cerebellar herniation and potentially less oxygenation. Thank you very much.